in the end, what I did is I submitted three recommendation letters. I also drafted a bio. I submitted my CV, which was kind of an amended CV specifically for this application, not my regular one. It was kind of my regular one with a short list of my most notable achievements. Yeah, that's the word. And what else? And I also submitted some evidence documents. These are separate PDFs. Uh, for me, it was 10 PDFs. To be honest, I could have gone with nine, and that was all I needed. But I thought that, well, I have one more, and I just thought that, why not? It wasn't really... Um, I don't think that it mattered much, but um, at some over time, I collected quite a few recommendations on LinkedIn and I just screenshotted some of them. And that was my last document. Evidences. So you mentioned that you submitted 10 documents, 10 PDF documents. So what were they like? We don't have to mention all of them, but what were they? I think it might help if you say which criteria you um, chose for this visa. So, so for me, picking a criteria... It was confusing at first, but at the end, it was a no-brainer, really, uh, because I think that they have one mandatory and four optional criteria. At least that's how it was back then. For exceptional talent, it could be either a proven record for innovation as a founder or a senior executive, and that wasn't me, clearly. It could be proof of recognition for work beyond the applicant's occupation. Uh, kind of, maybe. Uh, they have made significant technical, commercial, or entrepreneurial contributions to the field. Um, and that would be as a founder, senior executive board member, or an employee of a company. And that, if we count employee, that could be me also. And one last thing was exceptional ability in the field by academic contribution, and that wasn't me. So I kind of didn't really have a choice. Uh, I had only two possible criteria that I had too much. And as to how I approach them, um, well, over the years, I think that a few years ago, I heard about the US um, having their talent visas. I think it's called O2. And I figured that um, why shouldn't over the years I build the case for potential immigration? Uh, I heard maybe somewhere on the web, I read a few stories of people doing that without winning a Nobel Prize or something, uh, just by leveraging their existing work and the right lawyers. So I already had in mind that if I, I didn't, I never done a proper research, but I kind of figured that if I do conferences, some open source work, and maybe serve as a jury somewhere on a, some maybe programming competition or a conference, that that should be enough. And for me, my case, it was, uh, I was a conference uh, program committee member, spoke at several conferences, and um, I provided the list, an extensive list of all conferences and highlighted some of them, the major events with the uh, viewership numbers, with some references to contact uh, the organizers of these conferences to prove that I indeed spoke there and to prove the number of attendees of these conferences. What else? I also have semi alive, almost dead, well, let's call it barely alive technical blog, which still has some uh, viewership uh, thanks to Reddit and Hacker News. So I mentioned my blog there. Once again, I linked, um, I provided a link to my entire profile and also highlighted a few articles, a few blog posts with the most significant. Uh, numbers. I also calculated the total number of views, which added up to be something pretty, it was a pretty significant number. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was over one, uh, 100,000. And yeah, just a reminder for you, if you have like a dozen of blog posts, each one of them might not be a huge hit on the web, but when you add them up, the final number of views, it could, it could be something significant. I also linked my open source libraries and even single commits to some open source projects. If you don't have a library, it's not the end of the world. I think that it's perfectly fine to, I don't know, pick up a few GitHub issues here and there and start contributing to open source. Like now, if you don't have a case now, if you don't have 
well, as Nadia said, if you don't know your skip level manager now, or if you don't have any conferences on your resume, it's not too late to start now and build your case over time. In my view, you could do that in six-ish months, maybe in a year. And one last thing, well, I also provided some designs, uh, high-level designs and design description, design documents for the projects I used to work on. Luckily, these projects, they were open source, so I could link uh, concrete commits. But I think that it's totally okay to provide high-level descriptions of the systems that you've been involved with that are private and you don't really, you can't really disclose every technical detail. You can't really disclose the code. But in that case, I'd probably provide also some uh, person of contact, some POC to reach out to, so technician could verify that you indeed worked on this system. In that case, I'd probably provide uh, an email of, of a manager that oversees the development of this system. And yeah, last one last thing, I think it was um, contracts with uh, Facebook and what my previous startups, I was lucky enough to, um, well, when you work in IT um, in Russia, it's quite common to uh, surpass that median salary. So, um, and I think that one of the criteria on Tech Nation's website is to, uh, if you have high salary, uh, and there I provided my contracts and I also provided links to some research that mentions the average salary in the region. Because, well, if you come from the middle of nowhere, just like me, uh, Tech Nation can't really, they, they don't really know what's the normal amount of money there. So I definitely link to some research saying that this is X is what people get on average there. And I made like, I don't know, three X. Um, for me, I think, I think that in that very guide on technation, uh, that I, or they mentioned that they want you to provide, uh, recommendation letters from ideally some top level execs that wasn't, um, but personally, I, I don't think that at every company you really can can get an exec write you a letter and really know what you've been working on to have any kind of say or understanding of what you've been doing. So um, I know if it was wise or not, but I tried to contact people who were as high as possible in that career ladder, but still have uh, some sort of an understanding of what I've been doing in the company. And for me, that usually were my skip level managers. So, well, we have my direct manager and the manager of my manager is my skip level manager. So these people, they are usually, uh, they were the ones who, I'm, who I contacted. Um, so that was my skip level manager at Meta. That was one of the people who wrote a recommendation. Another person was um, a VP of engineering at my um, previous startup at Hazelcast. And well, we already got kind of a top level exec, but since the company is very small, he was basically my skip level manager. Um, and one last recommendation came from the CEO of my last startup. And yeah, we have a high level exec, but he was almost like my direct manager uh, because the startup was tiny. And as to how I approached them, well, basically I just, I, I think that I messaged even more people than just those three, because you never know if, well, these people, they're usually busy, especially if it's a CEO of a new startup, right? Um, so um, I messaged a few, probably five, six people asking if, they, if they'll be willing to write a recommendation for me. Uh, luckily, all of them replied yes. Uh, and at that moment, um, I knew that it was crucial to remind them of my previous achievements, because for some people, it's been more than a year from the moment they last saw me at work. So how could they even know what of my achievements or remember anything? So um, what I did, I 
once they agreed, I sent them a list of the projects and my most notable achievements um, so they could have, um, well, to remind them um, about my um, achievements and what to write in their recommendation letters. I also tried to provide some guidance on the structure because technicians, they want the letters to have a certain structure when people introduce themselves, when they describe your achievements in the company and how you impacted the company, how you impacted the project. And then last, they, uh, based on their guide, they want the um, recommenders to write how you would benefit the tech scene in the UK, which I would say is not the is not, a, is not a part of a regular recommendation letter. Uh, and also don't forget to attach a CV for every person that recommends you. Um, for me, I just screenshotted their LinkedIn's and that was enough, but if they don't have LinkedIn, ask them for their CV.